Hey everyone, this is George Kuros, and if you're actually watching this right now, it's because you got an early copy of my book, Because of a Teacher, Stories of the Past to Inspire the Future of Education. And when I say it's my book, I can't really ultimately say that. It's 15 wonderful authors that have shared stories that are based on uh, my podcast that I asked three questions. Who is a teacher that inspired you and why? Who's an administrator that inspired you and why? And what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? And there are variations of these questions. And what I wanted to do today was just read the first uh, chapter of the introduction to you uh, to kind of just walk you along the book and kind of explain and do kind of like a director's commentary, a kind of behind the scenes. And before I get into the reading of the book, I just wanted to kind of share how this idea came uh, to fruition. Uh, in December, I usually take a little bit of a break just to kind of like see, you know, think about ideas and kind of go away from the internet, go away from creating. And what I thought about was what would be a great way to kind of honor what educators were going through and, you know, really to try to share some uplifting stories because, you know, you hear a lot of uh, negative conversations especially COVID is basically uh, schools were opening and, you know, uh, people were complaining. Schools were, uh, you know, doing virtual and people were complaining and it's just like you couldn't win. And I know how incredibly hard it is to be an educator. I've been in education for the past 20 years and uh, to be kind of in that public eye all the time. And there's way more great stories about education than there are bad ones. And I think a lot of times the bad ones are the ones that we hear about. They're the ones that are featured. And so I thought, how can we actually honor educators right now? And I thought about talking about the teachers that really inspired me when I was a kid. Uh, you know, my administrators that, you know, lifted me up not only as a student, but as colleagues. Right. And that's the same with teachers, too, but also kind of help new people come into the profession. And so I came up with this idea uh, for the three questions. And ultimately, as I was, I was actually um, going through that process, uh, doing that podcast, and I started with myself first, and then I started interviewing people. But when I actually did it first, it was amazing because within one week, I talked about three teachers that inspired me. Uh, my kindergarten teacher from 40 years ago, uh, my grade three teacher, who was also my music teacher, and my high school uh, football coach and my phys ed teacher. And I talked about each three, even though I was only supposed to talk about one, but I just couldn't because I've had access to many great educators. You know, as a student, I'm very lucky and very blessed for that, as many students are. And what was amazing was um, they, they all responded to me in some way. My football coach DM me. I still talk to him uh, pretty frequently. He's a great inspiration in my life. And my kindergarten teacher commented on my YouTube channel and so did my grade three music teacher. And they actually listed specific things that I did. And it just reminded me how these teachers are just constantly cheering you on. They're just, you know, wanting you to do well. And that was actually the inspiration. That was the inspiration. Like, wow, like if I wouldn't have said anything, if I wouldn't have talked about this, would these teachers even know how much they inspired me? And so I thought, Hey, we're doing this podcast. It's getting out to a lot of our teachers, um, you know, that we're, we're talking about, but I wanted to reach more people. I wanted to be able to connect it. And so when you're, when you're reading this book, uh, I want you to understand that this is my way of saying thank you as it is with the incredible authors that have uh, taken part in this journey with me uh, to say thank you for all that you do. Um, but it's also to share like, what were the things, why did we become teachers in the first place? Why do we do education and so um i'm really proud of how this turned out and just if you read it you'll see you'll go through uh, like emotional roller coaster which is what i asked for the authors right i want to have that you know kind of great movie where you have that uh those ups and downs where you're laughing one second and then you're crying and then there's a really powerful message at the end and they did such an incredible job and um Typically, when you do an audiobook, and I've done a couple for uh, my past releases of Innovators Mindset, Innovates at the Box, uh, you're in a studio and you go through this meticulously. And if you, you know, stutter a little bit, you make a mistake, they make you record it over and over again. And I've, you know, sometimes I'll go in there and I'll say the same sentence a hundred times over and it'll sound perfect when you're listening, uh, but was it wasn't perfect when it was first recorded. 
And so what I'm doing here is just the rough draft, right? Just as a way of thank you. But I wanted to maybe just kind of add some commentary, like why did I write what I, I wrote uh, in this introduction? But I just wanted to provide this as kind of like a, you know, just a special gift as a way to, again, thank you for uh, not only what you do, but for also taking time to, to read and, and purchase the book. And so uh, I'm going to read the introduction. Thanks for being here. I, I can't wait to share it with you. And I, I can't wait uh, to actually read, hear your stories of the teachers that inspired you in your uh, professional journey and your journey as a student. So thanks for being here today. Because of a teacher, introduction by George Cross. that's me. What greater joy can a teacher feel than to witness a child's success? Michelle L. Graham. Do you believe as an adult, your childhood teachers are still cheering you on? I do. In fact, I know it's true. Former teachers have encouraged me years after I left their classrooms. Yet it often feels like educators aren't getting the same cheers in return. For every message a teacher receives about the impact they made on the life of a former student, there are countless others that go unsent. But if you think about it, every student you have enriched and inspired has probably helped and inspired countless others. We can't quantify a teacher's impact on students because it stretches beyond our comprehension. It is truly immeasurable. Chronic underappreciation for educators is nothing new. But in 2020, the narrative changed. For a moment, when COVID-19 first hit and many schools moved to home-based learning, the country seemed to recognize the enormity of the task that is teaching. In what felt like a matter of minutes, parents and caregivers started sharing on social media how impossibly hard it was to teach their children at home. If they could not handle their own children at home, they couldn't imagine what it would be like to handle 25 to 40 kids in a classroom. Soon, though, the negative comments about teachers returned and education was put in a no-win situation. If kids went back face-to-face -to, -face to school, parents raised concerns about safety and the spread of COVID-19. If students continue with virtual hybrid learning, parents said they couldn't help their kids while working their jobs. Obviously, people were in so many different and unimaginably tough situations, and it felt like a lot of stress that was, was directed towards education. No school or educator is infallible. A lot of them experience growing pains with their pandemic responses, but the majority of them care deeply about our kids and work amazingly hard to do what is best for the children and colleagues they serve. Changing the narrative. In light of the past year, I wanted to bring a little light to the education world. This is not to say there aren't any problems, but the problems tend to dominate the narrative in so many aspects of our lives. This is true in all fields, not only in the field of education. In fact, as educators, we can be guilty of only acknowledging negative situations with our direct colleagues. Think about it. How many times have you called your IT department with a problem that needs fixing? And how many times have you called IT just to thank them for the internet working all day in your school or classroom? Like that never actually happens. I know I never have, but it is an easy enough call to make. You only need to look on social media to see how the negative dominates interactions. Any business has a lot of positive interactions in a day, but usually they go viral when a customer has a negative experience. I used to use my social media accounts to complain about delayed or missed flights, but I rarely, if ever, said anything about the 95% of flights that didn't run into issues and provided great service. As a principal, I would focus on the idea that I should praise publicly and complain privately. But as a human being, I tended to, to, tended to do the opposite on social media. So at the beginning of 2021, I started a new series on my Innovators Mindset podcast, which I titled Three Questions on Educators That Inspire. I asked educators the following questions. Who is a teacher that inspired you and why? Who is an administrator who inspired you and why? And what advice would you give yourself as a first year teacher? The first two questions had a very distinct purpose. Not only could my guests share a meaningful practice that inspired them as a student or a colleague, but they could also give a much needed shout out to a former teacher, principal, or superintendent. And if you know I say the word shout out, that's what's happening. Uh, who better changed the narrative of education in the world than current educators? 
Their stories have the potential to help improve current practice, and they can inspire current teachers while honoring the educators who once inspired them. This is also an opportunity to encourage others to join the world of education. In both the U.S. and Canada, there are fewer and fewer people going into teaching each year. They don't yet know the power that comes with being able to change a young person's life by, by being there, celebrating who they are, and helping them learn and grow. Often the little things a teacher does each day, stuff so small, it doesn't seem like a big deal, makes all the difference in the world to a child. How far can our stories reach in our current world? To model the Q&A format for my guests, I answered the three questions myself. Although I discuss the administrator who inspired me and the advice I give my younger self, I will share those answers in later chapters. I started by discussing a teacher who inspired me as a student. Unfortunately, I broke my own rules and did not limit my answer to one teacher. I was blessed to have teachers who not only cared about me deeply, but also inspired a lot, a lot of what I do today. To be fair, I could have shared a lot more than three. I started with my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Stock. Shout out, Joan Stock. Who, who made me love going to school on day one. Not only was she incredibly kind and caring, but she always made me feel loved for who I am, which is super, it's just such, such an important message to receive at any age. I remember when we were learning to tie our shoes. She first taught us the easier method of using bunny ears. It was the first time I was able to tie my shoes on my own, and I was so excited. I, just as an aside, I'll tell you, like, I can literally, every time I tell this story and every time I think about this, I, like, remember sitting there. I remember Mrs. Stock right beside me going through that bunny ears and how proud I was at that moment. And, like, every time I tie my shoes, like, I think of her. Um, just, it just, I remember that and I was five years old and just remember Mrs. Stock being there for me. Um, after she taught us the more advanced way to tie her shoes, I told her that I wanted to stick with the bunny method, which I still do today. Uh, if it worked for me, I could still use that process. She said to this day, I make bunny ears when tying my shoes. And I think of Mrs. Stock each and every time I do, I love tying my shoes because I always think of my kindergarten teacher. After that, I had to talk about my elementary music teacher. Mrs. Penrose. She had extremely high standards for what she expected from her music class and school concerts, and she inspired me to do better. Because of Mrs. Penrose, I loved being on stage, and she sparked a confidence in me that I didn't have when I first entered in school. As I left elementary school to head off to high school, Mrs. Penrose wrote a heartfelt note to me that I still remember to this day. She thanked me for my dedication to music and acting and predicted that one day, I would be performing on a stage. Although puberty did a number of my vocal cords and singing ability, I still believe that I would have the opportunity to be on stage because Mrs. Penrose saw it in me. Eventually, I became a speaker in education and have had the opportunity to speak to hundreds of thousands of people with a confidence that Mrs. Penrose instilled in me from third grade and onward. When I speak and feel I'm inspiring a crowd, I know I learned that from an incredible teacher. I wrapped up by talking about my phys ed teacher and football coach, Mr. Hobbs. Coach Hobbs came to my high school as a new teacher when I was a senior. He may have had only one or two years of teaching under his belt at the time, but I'm inspired to this day by the things I learned from him. I was a cocky football player who felt my four years of playing on the team entitled me to the captain position. And because he was a new coach at our school, I had no issue telling him that was what should happen. He smiled and said, you think so? I did, and I told him as much. He said he looked forward to me proving it, which, to be honest, I thought was ridiculous. I had spent four years on the team, and he had been there for 24 hours. I was not the one who needed to prove anything. Still, I took his words to heart and worked extremely hard in the first couple of weeks of practice. When the day came for Coach Hobbs to name captains, he listed the four, first four with no mention of my name. He totally did this on purpose, by the way, just to, just to give me a hard time. And he then said, oh, by the way, we have one more captain. And then he said my name. I was grateful and relieved. He pulled me aside after practice and he said, you earned the opportunity to become a captain because of your leadership and practice, not because you had been here for, for four years. Don't ever think in your lifetime that you shouldn't have to earn respect from others 
and that leadership is something that you're entitled to. And just kind of an aside, uh, the people that want to go administrator into administration, uh, something I always talk about with people and just kind of getting people to think about this, they'll say like, hey, I'm ready to lead. And that's great. And that's great. That's obviously a very important step. Really what's key, and this is what Coach Hobbs taught me, is, is basically it doesn't matter if you're ready to lead if no one's ready to follow you. And that's something you always got to think about. And Coach Hobbs taught me, be that person worth following. Back to the book. I listened, and if I'm being honest, it went, I, it went in one ear and out the other at the time. I was just relieved to be named captain. But as I grew older and had different opportunities and disappointments, I remembered the word, words of Coach Hobbs. They inspired me to this day. Sometimes our best, our best lessons are taught in the present, but only embraced in the future. I actually, as an aside, I remember uh, when Coach Hobbs said this to me, and he's like, hey, you got to earn this. I'm like, I don't care. I'm captain. Like, that's all I cared about. But you think about that, you know, I was probably not of the maturity to really understand that, but he just, it stuck with me for years. And it's one of the reasons I still look up to Coach Hobbs to this day. Um, I shared variations of these stories on my podcast because my former teachers had such an impact on me. The most amazing part was that Coach Hobbs DM'd me on Twitter and thanked me for sharing while Mrs. Stock and Mrs. Penrose both commented on YouTube. And I, this was like amazing. This, the, I actually have uh, these lists in the book. Uh, Joan Stock, my kindergarten teacher. Thanks for your kind words, George. Love listening to you. Like <laughs> it's my kindergarten teacher. I just wrote, you just made my day. I hope you are well. Cindy Penrose made a comment. Oh, George, that was so heartwarming to hear. Thank you. I have such fond memories of the group you hung out with, and I will never forget she wore blue velvet, which I actually sang, and your mom saying, I didn't know Georgie could sing. So there you go. You've heard my mom calls me Georgie. There you go. All your accomplishments are just wonderful. Congrats. I responded in the comments. Mrs. Penrose, I can't believe you saw this and remember that. I still remember that white suit jacket I wore. Thank you so much for commenting, but more importantly, the impact you have had on my life. It was so great to hear from you. I was brought to tears, which you can actually see or hear right now, brought to tears uh, by these teachers' words and the knowledge that they still remembered me. As I shared at the beginning of this introduction, there are so many teachers who are cheering us on long into adulthood. I am glad that I shared stories about how they molded me as a student and as a person. But I know many more of their students are holding on to similar stories. To similar stories. A compliment shared is never wasted. What have we learned in our career? These three teachers and many others I have learned from and or worked with have inspired countless students to inspire the world. Yet none of them are perfect and all have grown throughout their careers. This is critical to acknowledge, especially as many new educators come into the profession thinking they will never make that kind of impact. This is why the third question, what advice would you give yourself as a first-year teacher, was so important to ask and answer. I have said countless times that I wish I could go back and apologize to my first-year students because of what I know now. I'm not saying I didn't have an impact on my first class of fourth grade students. In fact, I still connect with many of those students to this day, and they have shared ways in which I had helped them, which is always great to hear. If you look back on the beginning of your career and you're not somewhat embarrassed, you might not have grown all that much. Embarrassment over aspects of your early career doesn't mean you were so bad back then. It just points to the fact that you've learned in advance to get to where you are now. Being a learner is paramount to being an educator. And the minute we stop learning is when we should stop teaching. We can't ask others to do what we are unwilling to do ourselves. So crying from the comments from my teachers. Uh, anyways, so back to the book. Where are we going? As I was answering emails one Saturday afternoon, I, I read a message from a teacher who was struggling with stress. I thought about my three question series and how answers from longtime educators could reach those in need of a little encouragement. This book was born out of my desire to bring together stories from great teachers and administrators. Looking back, what we have learned is a much needed chicken soup when we are feeling defeated by the stress of education 
which never seems to let up. Just an aside, uh, think of the time where you're like, hey, I'm done. Like there is no done in education. Like I don't even know how people retire. It's just like you're always got stuff to do. But back to the book. Um, while this book can't ease the complexity of teaching, it can remind you why you went into, in, into education and whom you've inspired. In this book, you will read stories from other educators about the teachers who inspired them, the administrators who believed in them so much they learned to believe in themselves and the mistakes they have learned from. These stories matter. These ideas from other educators past may inspire you with ideas for the present and the future. As you read this, I encourage you to think of the teachers and administrators who inspired you and the advice you would give yourself at the beginning of your career. Share them on a social media platform using the hashtag because of a teacher. You may reach an old colleague, reconnect with a teacher who inspired you and or inspire the next generation of educators by sharing your story. But before we move on, I just want to thank you for taking the time to read my story and the stories of others who might not have become educators if it weren't for a teacher. Education is ultimately about changing the, tra the trajectory of others in a positive manner. You will never get all the thank yous you deserve, but I wanted to at least get you one thank you closer. Thank you. George Gross, a.k.a. Mr. Bunny Ears. Uh, that's, you know, I still get called that. Anyways, um, that is the introduction. And uh, I want to thank you uh, for getting the book. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this. But I also really encourage you, share those stories. Share the stories of the teachers who inspired you. Who better to lift and elevate the profession of education than the people reading this book right now, the people sharing these stories. And I want you to share these stories. And I'm telling you, you're going to be so inspired by what so many great educators have shared. And if you love their stories, if you like listening to them, if you like reading them, sorry, and we're talking about doing an audio book, a full audio book uh, in the future with every author reading their own story. Um, I would encourage you reach out, and thank them publicly, send them an email, find them. They're, they're really accessible. But um, I just think we need to lift each other up uh, more than ever. And this, that's what great educators do. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Uh, to listen. I can't wait to hear and read your stories. Uh, share them to the hashtag because of a teacher. I hope you enjoy the rest of the book. Thank you so much, Mr. Bunny Ears.